Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. And this week on the old magic roundabout, we've got a French dinghy, flatbed truck, and it's a burlet. I no doubt I'll get uh, told how to pronounce it properly in the uh, comments later. So yeah, as you watch this go around and have a look at it, I'd just like to welcome all the uh, new friends of the channel. Welcome aboard, thanks very much. And welcome back, all the old friends of the channel. Thanks for sticking with me, as usual. The usual old spiel. Much appreciated. Okay then. Let's get this off the magic, get it on a bench and have a damn good look at it. Here we go then. Let's have a look at the bottom base plate. You guys can have a look and discuss it amongst yourselves. There you go. Berlet, B E R L I E T. There you go. French dinky. Have we got it as close? Two little rivets holding the base plate on there. Got to take the axle off to get the plate out because it goes through the bottom of the base plate. So that's an easy peasy job, as usual, as you can see. That's a skinny end. On that, not sure about the back. We'll have to, this might be a bit trickier. This one, but anyway, let's zoom out. Right, basically, that just comes off. There's just the screw is missing at the back there. It's the same as the most attachments to like the foddens and the uh, and the whatever ones I can't remember what they're called now. The other ones that we do screw in there, countersunk screw. And the spare wheel goes on the back. Now, normally, I've just borrowed this one off some of the, off another vehicle. Is something like that, like a cup. I don't know if you can quite see that. You can see the shape of it, yeah. And that normally goes in with a screw like so, yeah. And then the tire just fits over there and, and clamps in. Now, what I found, I use. If I'm running out, I haven't got any of them. I use these. These are what they use for putting um, screws in, in wood. They're cups. Okay, and they're very similar. Very similar, and they and they will pass muster, if you know what I mean. So, if you get short, they'll use those. Right, I don't know why it's got a spare wheel attached in there. This piece of wire in there, don't know. Well, that's like that. I ain't got a clue. This is a generic casting for, casting for this burlet because it's got a uh, the hole there for the because they do a tipper truck version of this as well, and that's what that's there for. So it's like the generic casting. It's not bent. It's got a tire missing. It's been over painted with gold. Should be this should be like a maroon, a maroon color, dark red maroon. It's got the black fenders or wheel arches. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. The tires are rock hard on here. Yeah, they're all falling to bits. Yeah, they're, they're, they're co like concrete on here. They ain't worth saving. So, next step then, get these axles off there and there, and then that's, that's it. There's no interior, no glass. Okay, and that just fits in. It's got the two, the two teeth. Got fit in a hole there. Job done. I've looked at Google Images on a couple of these. And all this front is mostly painted in the body colour. And there is a chrome line going around there. Some of a chrome line down the, across the top there. This is black bumper. Some of these are black here. Black there. So there's not a lot of detail in this thing. So there we go. I'll get the tools out. Right. Just drill them out. Pretty straightforward. Get that underneath there. Pull that out. Now the, the axle did come away with that. That's good. Got a little tongue on the front. Pulls it out. Now notice, I think, these are plastic hubs. 
that one. These are definitely plastic hubs. Now these are going to be awkward because there's very, very, I mean, I'm pushing that down as far as I can. I think it's this end. There's, I'm going to have to really try and force that to get that hub off there. And there you see it's very little. I use the real pointy burr that I use at the time. People saw me do it. It's got a real sharp point to it. And I just try and spin around there with that. I don't want to cut the axles. I don't have to. Okay. And I can't leave the axles on. So it's got to be done. Got to be done. So this one. Just shift that out of the way. We can just grind off these. Excuse the noise. Put the finger in there like that and just let it spin round. Doing a bit of a Marty. There you go. Off. That's that axle off. And those. Oh no, the front ones the front ones are cast, but the back ones are definitely plastic, definitely. You can see the sheen on them like the sheen that, that plastic sheen on them there. Yeah, they're plastic. Okay, I'm going to have to use uh, close up since I've got to get the camera out of the way because I've got to get close in here. So, right, I'm going to get this axle off and then we'll go over and we'll uh, film the caustic. Just before we go into caustic soda, excuse me, just before we go into caustic soda, now I said to you these are plastic, these back ups, but they're not. Now, really, it surprised me. I could have sworn that these are plastic. On further investigation, I've got to be fired on. I just sanded some of that off, and it's very, very light. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put one in the caustic, but I'm going to wait until the major burn is over. Because, yeah, you can see now on the back, look. It because really, looking at them from the side like that, they look and feel plastic. So it's worth checking. So. Kettle's boiling. We'll get it done. Okay, let's try let's try this then. Water's just boiled. Got the gear in there. Don't know if you can see. I don't normally do this. Oh, put the fan on. There's the noise. that cab over put the old uh, caustic in I've got much of this left I've got to be careful now I've got to go and get some more I don't know what sort of type of paint this is going to be any good to get off or what the gold was on it. Tell you what, that's quite a high cabin now, it's going to whack a bit more water in there. Let's see how it goes. See how it goes, see how it goes. Working 
grey, the light grey. These are the colours on this: a light grey bed and a uh, dark red chassis and cab. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much gone. We'll whack that in the cooling tank. coming off the treat but certain paints come off dead easy other paints take a lot longer they do right okay the paint comes off fairly quickly I try to get it out as soon as there's always the uh, the odd fear of it uh, pitting if you leave it in too long. Yeah, that's good enough. Good enough, chaps. Dig the base plate out. In here somewhere. There it is. Walk her out. I've let it go off the boil, so I'll just drop them in there for a little while. Okay, all right, then we'll see you back at the bench. Okay, that's it out of caustic. Yeah, I only put the wheels in, these are in for half a minute, and yeah, they definitely they definitely are metal, but they're very light alloy or whatever they call it. I'm not sure, but yeah, so they come up nice, that's good. So I was wrong. They are not plastic. Castings. Alright, a little bit of paint left on, but I'm not too fussed about it. It'll come off. Now, I normally start off initially with one of these, a brass, brass brush, just to get, you know, I tack it with this first before I hit it with the um, rotary tool or the mini drill or whatever you want to call it, whatever you've got. So. Yeah, that's what I normally I'll just go back a bit because it's almost like there you go. Yeah, I normally give it give it a large with this all over before I hit it with the Dremel or the mini drill. Just get the worst off. Then the, then the other wire brush will get in all the nooks and the crannies. This had a load on the back. Uh, I haven't got the load, didn't come with it. I'm not going to buy another one. Purposely, it probably cost about six or seven quid to buy a load. It clips in, it's a plastic box that clips in there. So I'm going to make one. Yeah, then I hit it with the, with the wire wheels. I use different sorts different types that I've these are worn down ones what I've I've used in different uh, cases and I haven't thrown them away because it's uh, they're handy to get in in the in here in between the tanks and stuff like this so if you get them like that one and like that one yeah they're always handy to keep those that was that was one of them but it got it I got it on Balled round like that. Okay, so use the noise again, it's a bit noisy. When you go over the top with this one to get all the bits that you can. Nice. 
and we switch to this one to get in in these places here like so get all the rubbish out down here in the seams all the places you can't reach or can't get to with the others Especially in places like this, get in there. Get in all these little places. They're like a dentist, isn't it? Getting you cleaning your teeth and getting your filling sorted. Alrighty, back from the paint shop. So we see what we, how we got on. That's the light grey. Toe up black. I painted a black. Obviously, it was where number plates should go, but I haven't got any French number plates, so we're not putting that on. The cab. The chassis. This is the red, and I used Mercedes Jupiter red spray paint, non-metallic, from Halfords. Yeah. Okay. And it's rough because it's like a dark, dark red, which is what I wanted. Now the black, I actually hand painted that on because I thought masking this would be a right pain to get all around there, and all around there, especially this big bumper. So I thought, sod it, I'll go for it. And I, what I use for my hand painting is the Revel Aqua. This is the thin down black using their, using their thinner. The aqua thinner, I find that's nice. It goes well with this, obviously, because it's made for it. And uh, I got it to a nice consistency, and it went on nice. It was a matte, and I've uh, obviously lacquered it. So I painted it all, and then I did the black, and then lacquered the lot, and it came out nice. Now, as you can see here, I've scraped all that with my knife, with my curved knife, this one. So I'm going to scrape all that. So that's all, the, I'm now going to just put the headlights in and there's a little bits on top of these wings. I think they've got their indicators and the uh, door handles. That's all I've got to do on that. Then we're done on there wheels are done now these back ones i'm gonna have to because the actual axle turns inside inside there i'm going to, have to put a drop the super duper because there's no way i'm going to pin them over i can't do it and i don't want to put a longer axle in so i'm just going to put a little drop of the old super duper the magic super in there and that'll be fine so they're all done with new tires on so there we're, that's where we're at. That's where we're at now. I'm going to have a little go at doing this on here. It won't take too long, I shouldn't think, on here. We'll have a look at this on there. Now, while I'm doing this, I'll tell you, I've been to the... Uh, the consultant at the hospital and uh, they gave given me some drops for my eyes for now um, the pressure was creeping up into the 
high 20s where it shouldn't be. So I've got some drops to take the pressure down. And I got a letter this morning saying they're going to, they've got a follow up and I, I'm hoping they'll do the treatment on the 10th of May. So fingers crossed. Well, they're going to do the good eye. But they said they might do the the second, the bad eye. It might give me some improvement if they do it. They're going to try it and see what happens. So, fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. Because to be honest with you, every day goes by. It's getting harder and harder to see stuff like this, to be honest with you. It's very frustrating. Very frustrating. And the drops that I'll be on, I'll be on for the rest of my natural. Because once you've had a glaucoma attack, it... Uh, I don't know if anybody else has had any had a glaucoma attack. So I don't know. We'll see. But so that's the headlights. I'm just gonna put a bit on there very carefully. I'm using my magnifiers at the minute, so I don't really need to have them on. I'm going to do back and front. Or should I just do the front? I don't know. I'll just do the front for now. Because it might be wrong. If it's wrong, it's wrong, isn't it? Well, thanks for all the uh, comments on the previous video. Yeah. So I'm concentrating. There you go. That should do it. Right, then we're looking something like now. Yeah, when I... I wasn't going to scrape it. I thought, nah, I'll leave it. And then I thought, sod it. And I just couldn't leave it. So I took the ball by the horns, as they say, and went for it. What's the worst can happen? Strip it and repaint it, that's the worst what can happen. There you go. What's that one? Ugly truck, this at the end of the day, and they've got a big long snout on the front of it. Just a little bit, just a little bit, there you go. Right, okay. There's nothing on there he's doing. Oh, I don't know, I don't want to, no, I can't put that now. Right, okay, like, let's let this dry, and then we'll get to the assembly stage. It's that time again, assembly time. Here we go then. Right, we're all done. I've done the, uh, I put the back axle in because I had to glue that because as you can see, there's hard landing room in there. But it's all spinning, all singing, all dancing. And I have to glue the front plate on as well because there's nothing really. I couldn't even get a, that there. I wouldn't even be able to get a, if you look, I wouldn't even be able to get a screw in there. So, i have to glue that front plate down as well. So, let's, should we do, yeah, let's do the back first. Put the back on first. So, usual thing, two slots at the back, two pegs, push it in. 
making sure your hole's lined up, which it is. Put your countersunk screw in, push it through nice and tight, and then this way around, we'll put the tire on first, and we'll put the cup on. Use my getting my hands getting in the way. Gotta work around it a bit. You just put that on there like so. Get it uh, lined up in the middle. Flip it on its back. Wait a minute. Wait one, chaps. Wait one. That really needs to go. That won't be way around. I'll put it now. It's all in place that way around, isn't it? Put this on here. Line it up. Line it up. Screw it in. That's it. So that's in. Spare wheels in, backs on, that's sitting flush. Let's get this bit in here. Same thing, make sure the right ones are right way up, axles exposed. Tongue goes in this end. Drop that down there. Put a bit of super duper on it. Gently does it. Right. Okay. We'll put a bit of this on it. There you go. We're all rolling now. And we'll stick the load on it. This is not the original load. It's only a temporary road. I haven't got the original one. It's quite expensive to buy, so I made this one up. So there you have it. Let's get it on the old magic roundabout and see what it looks like. This is what we started with. French dinky, flatbed truck, a burlette. A bit scruffy and play-worn. So now, have a look. See how it turned out. Have a look at this. Here we have it then. All done and dusted. Dinky toys, barrelette, truck, flatbed truck. Repainted. The uh, body line has been scraped. New tyres. And just a temporary load on the back. This is one I made earlier. I just grabbed it and stuck it on here because I didn't want an empty bed on it. And to buy the original clip-on grey box is quite expensive on its own, so I don't think I need to do that. I can put anything on anything I like on the back of this. Yeah, so there we go. Another one done. Another one bites of dust. Another one saved. Strange looking thing with that huge great bumper on the front. Now, I did look at the original Google images, and some of them did have a little chrome um, piece on the front of the bumper, little chrome stripes, but they were only very narrow and very thin. But on the cast in here, they're quite big and chunky. And I think if I'd painted them in as they're, as they're molded in on here, they would look out of place. So I've gone just with a straightforward black. There, there is one or two 
of the real ones with the straightforward black, so it's not too bad. Anyway, thanks for watching. Look forward to your comments. Okay, so whatever you're doing, enjoy yourselves. Be happy. That's what it's all about. So I'll see you next week with something else. Okay then. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now.